This is to show you how to manipulate the data for the exercise looking at the metal flux through Dulles Estuary. Um, half the spreadsheet's been filled in for you um, and you can fill in the other half yourselves but we'll just go through what's been done with the data for the neap tide. Um, then you can do the same thing with the data for the spring tide. For the neap tide then we've got hourly measurements over a 12 hour period um, we'd expect the tide to go in and out. Um, the discharge has been measured and there's an error with each discharge measurement. The error for the discharge measurement is 5% of the reading. That's been taken from the literature to do this method. Um, so rather than having a triplicate measurement made uh, and then working out an error on it, uh, it's been found from previous work that the error on this type of measurement is 5%. So we have that written in there, that's the 5% error and then it's been calculated um, for each of the discharge measurements made. Then we've got the concentration of the soluble metal and the error. In this case the errors have been worked out from triplicate analysis of the samples. So a sample is taken and split in three to be analysed three times and we've got the errors. Um, when the concentration is zero, we've actually got the error is zero some we might talk about but in this case that's the data that you have. Then we've got a concentration for the particulate metal also in milligrams a litre. The particulates were collected on the filter paper and the filter paper was digested in acid and then the um, small amount of acidic fluid was diluted and then analysed by spectroscopy in order to get the concentration of particulate metal in milligrams a litre. Again, the analytical procedure was carried out in triplicate. So the sample um, was split into three and filtered. Each part of the sample was filtered and each filter paper was digested. And so we end up with an error that's derived from triplicate analyses. Um, in order to work out the flux, that's the amount of metal passing per second, um, we multiply together the discharge in meters cubed a second times the concentration in milligrams per litre. If you work out the, what happens to the units when you multiply those two together, then you'll be able to put the units, the appropriate units, on for the metal flux. The units are going to be in mass per time. Similarly, that's been done for the particulate metal. And then the total amount of soluble metal is calculated by multiplying the flux, which is the amount of metal per time, by the time over which that metal flux has gone on for. The metal flux has gone on for one hour in each case. The interval is one hour. So the total is the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600, multiplied by the flux. So the flux multiplied by the um, time for which the flux has gone on for. And so the units for the total metal will be units of mass. That's for the soluble. Same thing's been done for the particulate. Then the rest of these columns are to do with working out the error. If we go to one where we've actually got some data, this is the error on the total soluble metal. Um, we've calculated it by multiplying the discharge by the concentration um, and by the time. So in here we've got the error on the discharge divided by the discharge squared plus the error on the concentration divided by the concentration squared plus the error on the time which in this case is zero divided by the time squared. All of those added to that together and square rooted will give us the error, the fractional error. So that's the fractional error. The error we want is the resultant error so we need to multiply the fractional error by the resultant quantity. The resultant quantity is the total.
actually the, the total uh, mass of soluble metal. Okay, you've done this already, but you can just see the way that it's set up there. You've got three things being multiplied together, and the three errors are dealt with by working out the fractional error of the three of them, and then multiplying that by the resultant quantity. Um, fractional error by resultant quantity. So, on the 4068, which we've got for the total soluble metal, the mass of total, the mass of soluble metal during that hour, the error is 838. The same thing's been done for the particulate. It's exactly the same. Total particulate's been worked out. That's multiplying 3600 by the um, the flux of particulate metal, 3600 number of seconds in an hour multiply that by the flux which is mass per second and we end up with the mass and then the error again these three components the error on the discharge divided by the discharge squared the error on the concentration divided by the concentration squared plus the error on the time divided by the time squared and then take the square root of those three added together in order to get the fractional error and the resultant error is the fractional error multiplied by the resultant quantity. Okay. This column which is the resultant error squared is purely there to make it easy for you to add up the total. In the end we want to know what the total amount of metal is and therefore the total uh, error on that. The total amount of metal for the soluble is the addition of how much passed in each hour and in this case there are only three hours when any metal passed one of those numbers is negative but we add those three together some of these that gives us the total amount of metal during that tidal period over that 12 hours and the error in order to sum the errors we square the errors which is what's gone on in this column and then add them together and take the square root so that's why we've got this column resultant error squared is because we're going to add those together and the same thing's been done here okay. you can see what's been done then for the neap tide data you can copy that across and do the same for the spring tide data then you need to um, think about what you want to show in the data and that's going to relate to your objectives your objective was to work out what the metal flux was and the error on that this is your metal flux for the period uh, for a neap tide and you'll have the same for a spring tide and you'll have the error on it and you've got that for both soluble and particulate perhaps the best way of sharing that data is a table um, your other concern is what about the variability that you're not able to sample so on the days when you haven't sampled anything could have been going on in order to say something about that those days when you haven't been able to sample the variability you want to comment on the processes that have gone on in order to say something about the processes that have gone on then it's probably useful for you to draw graphs of how the discharge and the concentrations or the fluxes changed over time in these two periods so you want to draw graphs of concentration at discharge concentration or discharge and flux uh, against time for both these two